recorded, uh, then you can close your video uh, and um, and also uh, let me know if there is a specific difficulty. And uh, just wanting to very uh, thankful and welcoming to Marcella Danone uh, and and for her time today. And as we're bringing people in, maybe you want to share either sharing here or in the chat uh, where you're from and what brought you here today. Andrea, mm. lot of friends here. Welcome, Claire. Uh, you oh. welcome. Are we all introducing ourselves? I'm just if if you feel to to introduce yourself uh, and saying where you're calling from, what brought you today, you're welcome to. We're waiting for people to come in. But... Okay. Uh, well, anything that starts with "We are nature," I I want to hear how other people are putting that into words. <coughs> so, yeah, for me, that's brainer, and it's like to see it in a sentence anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm in right now. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is my first call of the day. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Just check my calendar out. You you won't be saying that later. <laughs> no, thank you. Anyone else wants to share? What they're, where they're from and what brought, what brings them here. Luis, yes. Hi, um, I'm from Wales and um, sort of living with Kate and Sibby who are also on this chat and um, Sibby's doing, been doing a lot of stuff around conflict and she said, hey, we're doing this thing. And so I had this lovely sort of delight of looking through all this program going oh what would I like to do what do I feel drawn to and um yeah I feel um I feel really connected to the land that I was born on and where I used to live and um love being outside so yeah I'm happy I'm happy to be here I'm right by a window and looking at birds feeding outside so thank you welcome uh, if I may go next, uh, yeah. So, uh, hi everyone. My name is Aman, and I know Marcella was talking about uh, India. So, uh, in India, uh, uh, every name has a meaning. Like Aman means peace, and uh, she was talking about uh, Chitra. Chitra means drawing. So, every name in India has uh, a meaning. So that is just a, a comment, but uh, what uh, draws me here is creative people like Uri and, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, of course, Marcella, uh, so much uh, to learn uh, through simple techniques. Uh, the other day we were using uh, different tools. I know Uri was leading the call where we use fire and stone and leaves to uh, uh, kind of unload different emotions of offload. Uh, so much, uh, so many emotions. So it's great to see how people around the globe are using uh, nature to uh, de-stress or kind of uh, uh, get their uh, center back. So that's why I'm here to know more about uh, the universe, what they're doing, and how I can incorporate into some of my daily meditation. Thank you. Thank you, Amman. Yeah, you can invite yourself in. Naomi, yes, please. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Naomi. Um, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, and I'm here today, actually, um, yeah, for the same reasons as Aman and Claire uh, described. I also saw the title uh, of this session and I was like, okay, I need to be there. Because, um, yeah, I'm learning so much that I never expect to learn. So, um, yeah, I have no expectations. Um, but yeah, excited to be here and curious to what uh, might come out of it. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, 
Marian. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Marian Rios from Colombia, and I, cos uh, I am a copsychology, a copsychologa, and Dragon Dreamer, too. I know you, Uri, for Dragon Dreamer. Y, uh, I am ES Charter in Colombia, and Marcela is my partner. And I have many expectations because, because Marcella is very good. It's excellent. Thank you. So I'm I'm Vinita from India, calling from the UAE. What brings me here is one I have attended Uri's all the sessions Uri's has. Uri has held so far in the summit <laughs> and psychology and especially eco psychology because uh, I have been hearing about it and I am really interested in it because uh, human beings can't stay separate from ecology and we have done much harm by not integrating uh, the the earth and the human beings. So I'm very curious and I'm looking forward to what emerges in this conversation. Thank you. Welcome, Neta. Yeah, welcome. And uh, this is Anne, if you want to share. Yeah, I'm Anne. I'm in uh, Southwest England, and I'm really happy to be here. I feel really privileged to be able to come along to hear and learn and be open. I'm curious and excited too. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. We're, we're just uh, sharing a little bit uh, as people are coming in where we're from and you can do it in, in the chat or speaking if you prefer and what brought you here. Um, if you still want to share, we give a little bit more time for people to come in before we do the, the practice. Yes, Andrea. Yeah. Good, unmuted. Hi, um, I'm Andrea from South Africa and I'm the IES um, representative here and I'm a follower of Machala's work. Um, and yes, I'm just very excited about what's going to come out today. So thank you for having me. Hello, Andrea. Great to have you here. Great. So many continents and places. Amazing. When you listen about IES, it's International Ecosystem Society. Yeah. You have 20, more than 20 represented nations. So if, if you, uh, we see Angelo joining and uh, if you want Kate and uh, Ruana, if, if any of you want to share where you're calling from today. I'm Amanda from the island of Jersey, I see. And we have Rowana in Michigan, US, interested in anything related to nature. Um, yeah. Angelo. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm calling, I'm Angelo. I'm calling from uh, Italy, although I normally live in Colombia. And um, uh, I'm just curious about to listen to Marcella and uh, to, to learn, to learn from what I listen. Welcome, benvenuto. Grazie. Great. Yeah, Kate. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate, and I'm also living in West Wales and have been here for over 20 years. Uh, living on a small holding, doing forestry and organic growing, etc., etc., and home educating children and trying to be intentionally with nature. Uh, although I struggle to get out in nature, there's a block there. Um, and so for me, there's I'm interested in 
working on grief around being separated from nature and uh, how that affects us all. I believe that affects us all. So uh, yeah, that's me. Thank you for bringing this in and CB. Hi, yeah, I feel really shy, but I'm gonna <laughs> say hi anyway. I'm Sibby from Wales and um, I'm here because I've done some environmental activism and uh, in my life already and something that connected to me, me to that was engaging with yeah the grief that came up when I was in nature and the grief of what we're doing to the world and that kind of I sort of thought no wonder no wonder I'm experiencing a lot of difficult feelings so yeah, that really keyed me into something and it led me to do activism. And I'm also thinking about studying a counselling course. So this is really great for me to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, CB. Welcome, CB. Thank you for joining us. Um, anyone else wants to share? We have Shanti, Floor. Uh, it's, it's, not obligatory, you can also be passive spectators. <laughs> um, it's a, the idea is to having a conversation uh, together and uh, feeling that we're sitting in our homes and we have this uh, opportunity to be in each other's homes and, uh, um, and listen and, and learn together. Um, and maybe I can share also that uh, I'm Uri, <laughs> calling from Italy, originally from Israel. Um, I've been on a journey uh, which uh, is both inner and outer uh, at the same time. And uh, I've been very privileged and happy to share this journey in this summit as well through different ways through interviews, through spaces uh, in which I shared um, my personal story as well. Um, and, uh, and also bringing in the different activities we do with Imagine Action. And this new activity that Imagine Action is a arts-based organization in which we're based in different places in the world. And it started by Hector Aristizabal, uh, a mentor of mine. And, and Angelo is also part of Imagine Action. And we're mostly people working with uh, arts-based social technology, uh, with communities, with uh, conflict areas, and um, uh, loosely organized, as, as, uh, as I would say. And we're building up some capacity to offer uh, things collectively. So a lot of us are working individually as facilitators. Um, uh, and now I think what I feel is this moment is calling us to be able to connect and, and share knowledge and share wisdom and create spaces for that to happen and offer mentoring, uh, peer learning opportunities. And as part of this process, we're also hosting this conversation with people that inspire us and inspire our work. And uh, we had uh, for a conversation, the first conversation, with John Croft, the creator of Dragon Dreaming, co-creator of Dragon Dreaming last week. And this is on the website, you can find a recording of that. And um, uh, the, the theme was, we are storytellers. And um, it's also, we're trying to, to learn from these different approaches into and, and create a, a base of connection into um, how can this work be something that heals and connects? And sometimes we, we sense it, we sense that it is there, that it's possible, but we don't have language. Or, and, and if we don't have language, then it's hard to explain it. And if you can't explain it, it's hard to get resources. <laughs> and if you can't get resources, it's, got to, it's, it's hard to be sustainable. And so I'm, <laughs> and keep their energy going. So I'm really happy to have today Marcella Danone because I, I see her as, as one of my teachers. Um, we met in the, near where I live in Pantare Education Center, a very a story in itself uh, that requires a whole, its whole series of webinars. Um, 
but um, a dream, a big dream of also people uh, working for the common good. And I joined, I was happy to be able to join an exchange uh, with some of the ecopsychology. And uh, I was really moved and inspired by ecopsychology. Uh, I feel that I had a lot of resistance around psychology. Um, I, I, I shared in other conversation in this call that I had, you know, uh, some would say post-traumatic situation in the army and, and I never went to a psychologist and I have a strong resistance to psychologists, to psychology. And I cannot really explain it completely, but when I heard echo psychology, it read at the first time, I said, oh, this is a psychology that makes sense for me. <laughs> and, 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 and I appreciate that. Did because it felt that it it connects that's what I'm going through and what we're all going through is connected and and it's not about that I or someone else is having a problem is that we're and and also it gave me a, some kind of view into how my process is happening and finding language to that and nature has been such a teacher for me and meeting echo psychology and meeting Marcella allowed me to seek it more intentionally as well and and and, and have language for that so it's really great to have Marcella here and uh, have all of you join and I, I, I thought that we can start with a centering activity. Uh, John was inviting us for Pinakari last week, which is the uh, dragon dreaming centering. And I know in echo psychology, there is also a practice of centering. And maybe Marcella, you can lead us into a short centering before we begin. Thank you. Thank you, Uri, for creating yeah. this magic and night. And maybe first, just Shanti wanted to share. So I just yes, I'll, I'll be very quick. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I I resonated with, with what you said, Yuri. I have PTSD, and my experience of the mental health system in some ways has added to the trauma because you can see the strains of capitalism and patriarchy and um, colonialism, sort of like almost funneling through those spaces um and yeah and and i i'm in healthcare and i'm i'm part of what i'm doing and what's brought me here is um the work that i want to do in improving communication and conflict within the healthcare space um as well as just individually i want to be able to show up better um in life and as, as, as an individual in my relationship with others and the planet. So um, there's a lot in a lot of deep things, I think, in what you said there that could be unpacked. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shanti. Yes, thank you. We start with a centering, centering practice, mindfulness practice, because Eco psychology, it's about eco, the outer world, psychology, psyche, soul. We want also to bring back psychology to his roots, talking about the soul. And when we talk about the outer world and the inner world, we have to have clear what the center is, which this point within us from where we can look inside and then look outside in the present, in the here and now. So before each meeting, before each um, tracking, before each conference, um, we start with the practice, we will do it just in a few minutes. We call it centering and it go through, I'm gonna tell you five moments, bringing attention to the breathing, bringing attention to the body, to the mood, to the heart, and to the head to the mind, and then to the center. I, I can make myself understand that my English is not perfect, and so please be sensible, <laughs> although I might not using, be using the right word. So I ask you to sit comfortable. You can either keep your eyes 
open or close, close it's easier, but as you feel more comfortable, it will take just a few minutes. And take a deep breath and then put all your attention to your breathing as it is you don't need to change the rhythm the depth just be aware how am i breathing in this moment how deep How fast? We breathe from the first until the last minute of our life. It connects us to this life. So let's give just a few moments of attention to this activity. And then please expand all your attention to all your body. What is your body feeling in this moment? Physical sensation, cold, hot, hunger, comfort, discomfort, hurts, pains, collapsed. What is the body telling? Our body is our earth element and we have to learn to listen to his language. So just few moments to give all the attention to our body with his language, physical sensations. And then go to a more subtle dimension of our inner nature and let's concentrate on our emotions, feelings. What is my heart telling me right now? Which mood do I have right now? Don't judge, just accept, just pay attention. How am I feeling in this moment? And any feeling is welcome. I'm just aware of what is present in this moment in my heart. And then I go even deeper to, in, in, to an even more subtle dimension of my inner world. And I go to the mind. How is my mind right now? Silent? Or some thoughts are going? what I did before, what I will do after. Just be aware. Just be aware of what is the atmosphere of your mind in this moment. And if there are thoughts, just reassure them that you saw them and leave, let them go. You will find them in a few minutes. This moment, let them go. And then look from this point, wherever you feel it, this central point of your inner world, from where you observed the breath, the body, the heart, the mind. Concentrate yourself on this central point, this focal point of your inner being, the point from where you can be present to everything that happens inside. This is a centering point where you can strengthen yourself, when you can enrich, calm, root yourself. You can renew your energy whenever you need it. It's the point of your strength, of your essence. It's your inner home. Just check wherever you feel it is. If it is in your body, in the point of your body, if it is in an image, in a symbol. And 
just concentrate a few moments in this center, in this present, this feeling of being present here and now. And this is the meeting point between the inner world and the outer world, because from this point you can decide now to focus all your attention to the external world. If your eyes are closed, you can try to focus your attention now just what you can hear. You can focus your attention to the fact that you are in face of a PC in connection with people that you maybe don't know from all over the world. So although you are on your chair, you are connected in this moment with other people, other nations. No matter if you are in a town or in the middle of the wood, you are connected with the earth. Imagine that downward, there is soil, rock, earth, fire, the whole planet. And you're connected with the sky, above your head, air, clouds, atmosphere, space, universe. Wow. From this central point, we are connected with all our planet and with all our universe. And we're all connected among us. Each one of us is much more than a single cell with a single point, with a single being. And from this point, we can learn how to expand our awareness and how to be present to the presence of others. You make it, knowing that you can go back, you can come back to this point whenever you want. Make again a deep breath and be ready to open your eyes. And we will meet again through the screen. Thank you so much, Marcella. Welcome. Mm. We cannot really connect to others. We cannot really connect to the world if we don't awaken the attention, the listening, the respect, the empathy toward ourselves, first of all. So this is a, a good practice to become friends of ourselves, to learn how to listen to the needs of our bodies, of our heart, of our head, in order to become more sensible of feeling the presence and the needs of other people around us and of other non-human people around us and for other uh, beings around us that we can learn to perceive as beings and not as things. The problem in our occidental culture that plants, for many also animals, for many also people, are things. And so we don't give the honor to the otherhood, to the others. And so we can't get really connected with them because we are only focused on, uh, on our ego. That's a perfect, that's a beautiful creature, the ego. We need to go through, learn to love and know and manage our ego 
our personality, with all the facets of our personality, with all the complicates, the complex things of our personality, in order to understand and to learn and to get in touch with the complexity of other people, the complexity of the world we live in. That's actually the, the essence of eco-psychology that brings together the need to um, create an ecological relationship, good relationship with ourselves and with the world. And getting well along with ourselves is the first step to getting well along with others. And the opposite, we can also start from um, a company, guiding people to gain a good relationship with the outer environment, bring them in nature in a certain way, in a respectful way, in a curious way, in a loving way, in order to strengthen this ability to be curious, loving, and interest, and then bring it inside. So from inner world to outer world, when we improve the relationship in one of these two poles, the other also gains. So that's why eco-psychology, it's not only for psychologists. Eco-psychology is also for people that works mainly in education, in nature, in tracking, in um, outdoor activities. But actually, it's, uh, we will see that it's a vision that's for all uh, Earth citizens in this moment of our history, because we need to do what John Macy calls a, calls a turning point. We are in a turning point. We need to open our minds, our hearts, our souls to the fact that we are not alone. Not alone as individual, not alone as ethnic, religious, political group, not alone as humanity on this planet. This planet is not for us. We are one of the species of this wonderful, complex, marvelous planet, and we are one part of it. The vision that eco-psychology brings, it's a, called ecocentric, in antithesis to anthropocentric, in an anthropocentric vision that the ones that dominate our actual culture, everything is here for us. We are the higher, the best, the, the honors of this planet. In an ecocentric view, we are one of the element of this ecosystem. Together with other, we are what we are thanks to all the species that came before. Uh, the studies on the human genome uh, confirmed that our DNA has the any N A T sorry ninety eight point five percent of the other primates, but we have in our genome also all the other animal, plants, bacteria, virus. All the history of our planet is written on our genome, so we are. Earthling, terrestrian, we are sons and daughter of this planet. And as sons and daughter of this planet, we have to honor, to thank, to be aware that we are together with a lot of, to honor our brotherhood and sisterhood with all the other beings. So this is the step that psychology wants to help us to bring in education, in therapy, in counseling, in working in the organization, in architecture, building house in a certain way, creating the space in house that can facilitate a certain kind of meeting with the people that live inside, with the world that is outside. It has a, it's, it's a, an invitation to invent new ways, new ways to live together, to work together, to dance. To... So there is a lot of, ecosocology doesn't invent anything. It uh, recovers many cultures of that, uh, that uh, cultivated roots 
of our humanhood. So a lot of honor for all the native cultures and cultivate what the best technology brought us. Uh, Theodor Rozak is the founder of eco-psychology. He says eco-psychology is not anti-industrial, it's post-industrial. So there is the belief that technology used with uh, awareness, with wisdom, look what it's allowing us. I mean, we are in India, in, in, in South Africa, in the United States, in England, and in South America at the same time. Welcome technology. So uh, learning how to bring the best from our past and how to create the best for our future in a view uh, capable of uh, uh, catching the interconnectedness with an, a, a systemic view, a prospective view, where we learn that each, each action that we do will have consequences. And so we can choose which action to do in order to have other consequences. And from more psychological point of view, or this is the contribute that psychology brings, to learn how to recognize uh, all the facts of the past, of what we learned from others, from our culture, from the prejudice we kept from the environment where we grow, and to connect with our center, telling, okay, do I really think this thought that is in my culture, or in my house, or in my place where I work, to be aware that I can choose the thoughts I want to cultivate, that I can choose the words I decide to say, that I can choose the actions I want to do. We know that um, the past has a strong weight on our story, psychoanalysis and, and so on. But uh, eco-psychology is based on humanistic psychology and transpersonal psychology. And we, whatever our past has been, we can always decide how to act in our future. It's never too late, said Virginia Woolf, to have a, a happy childhood. <laughs> so our past, it's uh, an inheritance. Sometimes our past is weight, but we can anyway be always free to decide how to use our past. So uh, the fact to do a work of personal growth, it's a must. We have to be, uh, to recognize um, who we really are and to take off what other told us we should be and in order to bring the treasure we have inside as seeds to the uh, moment we live to the society where we live to the family the friends the work the group where we live each one of us has many many things to bring to life and to others and we will only feel really happy and satisfied when we will have the opportunity to flourish each one of us his own nature okay. i stop one moment for questions or whatever because i know that in italian i go and talk and talk and talk and surprised to see that it works also with english <laughs> yeah yeah thank you marcella and i feel like the centering kind of helped us to feel it uh, and um, the, the sort of well-being and peace that comes in when we are able to do it. And maybe before we, we go around with the questions about eco-psychology, I, I want to take a step back and uh, there is something in one of your training that you shared that was very moving to me and it actually was a story that you shared about 
uh, a moment in which you felt something uh, and 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 i i i want to ask you if you can bring that moment and i think it was a sunset in jerusalem that you were uh, maybe you can tell us something and maybe that can speak about those moments in our lives that we feel it it was a sunrise yes um i don't know if you all know what uh, does some one of you never heard the word transpersonal psychology just to do like this so i know that's the transpersonal psychology is the fourth strength of psychology is that study all what goes behind the personal psychology all what goes behind the ordinary state of mind so dreams ecstasies uh, intuition and uh, maslow it's one of the creators of transpersonal psychology he created the word peak experience to define this experience that we all live sometimes for just a, a second sometimes it lasts for minutes sometimes it lasts for days where it's like if uh, something of the ordinary vision opens and we have a wider vision of ourselves of the world of the universe we have a perception that goes beyond beyond what our five senses can perceive normally and we perceive emotion we can we can feel emotions that are can be very 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 strong and uh, what happens to me I, I don't i didn't remember i told you this yuri because it's a i haven't talked to many people this in um i was I, I was studying a student in jerusalem and um, one night i couldn't i couldn't sleep it, it was a very difficult moment i i couldn't sleep i was very anxious very and i went out walking in the night and i walked and i walked and i walked until i arrived at the top of a hill that just faced to the desert was in Harazofim, in face of the Galilean desert. And the moment I arrived on the top of that hill, <laughs> quite also tired from the, all the not sleeping and being, at that moment, the sunrise, like a red, incredible, huge sphere. And that has been a kind of shock gone like a and there i had the feeling that everything in the world is luck now it doesn't have this trend it's just a sentence we have this sentence in t-shirts in, in, in mugs in everywhere it's not so special but it hasn't it wasn't the sentence it was the feeling of it and this uh, stayed like um, a revelation. Well, this moment has been very, very strong and then changed. But this sentence that uh, the essence of life is love, I uh, meet in other, many other situations. Um, my mother had a serious cancer. This was already happened 19 years ago, so it's easy for me to tell. And at the beginning, at the end, she was she was taking morphine, morphina. I don't know what it's in English. And well, morphine, it's a drug, brings to an, another state of awareness. And she was the last day in kind of ecstasy, and she was telling me everything is love. I really felt that she could see also because she was already at the end of her staying here. She was already watching far that what we can see. And it was the same message. So this is interesting. So 
but what is interesting of this, I'm telling you this because I'm sure that all of you had this sometimes little intuition that for some moments can, uh, can uh, make us understand that we are much more than what we are teach at school that we are, that we come here probably with a pupils, that we are much more powerful than what we think we are, that we are, we are much more magic than what we are teach we are, and that we can do a lot. You just have to overcome the thoughts that, oh, it's not possible, you can do it, you are too small, well, how do you want to change the things? There is a story of a man that on the shore, uh, when there was the low tide, when, when the, and the, all these stars were on the, on, the, on the beach, and they were crying. So this man going on the beach took one and sent it to the water. That it does another step, take another one, send it to the water. Someone on the top, like this, who said, Oh, what are you doing? There are too many. You will not be able to change the things. The first one just continued and he says, For that one, things change. So it doesn't matter if what we can do, it's a little piece, but we can change a little piece. So, uh, talking about who is active on activism or feel the need to be active, ecopsychology wants to be an empowerment of trust, whatever you can, you can do by yourself or creating nets with others and uh, changing maybe little things, but at least something you will do. Uh, it's very important to. Um, to take back once again the feeling of our personal power, because all the all what's happening outside, and what we saw with this COVID, uh, it was very evident, make us lost, losing, uh, make us losing our feeling of empowerment. Oh, the virus will come and get me. Um, there are a lot of small things we can do. So we could live with uh, the International Eco-Psychology Society, we create a whole series of webinars where um, in order to help people to recognize they could choose to leave this event in fear, to leave this event in learning, or to leave this event in growing. So and, and this is also for when, when, when we talk about um, being active, trying to, to do something for this planet, to do something for all our brother and sister and to do something for our own culture because our planet has 5 billion years and went through many disasters. We are just one of the disasters he's, he's facing. So, it's not to save the planet. The planet will manage it in another way with other form of landscape and everything. What we have to say, it's our culture, our culture, our, all what we conquered until now. It would be too bad to have to start once again from, oh, the wheel, great, with the wheel you can move faster. <laughs> the fire, so we can stay warm in the night. So. Um, Whatever we can do in this moment, it's important because everything from the outside, from the media, uh, I don't know if on purpose or not on purpose, but push people towards feeling <gasps> powerless, towards fear, towards a sense of impossibility to do anything, toward apocalypse. Um, okay, but even if we are going toward an apocalypse, I'm sure that each one of us wants to be active until the last moment trying to avoid it. Because it's anyway more interesting than just ah, waiting for the end of the world. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing this story. Uh, and um, I remember it as a sunset and 
now it's a sunrise and maybe that's it. Maybe the apocalypse is not a sunset, it's a sunrise. <laughs> so I, I just want to, yeah, Claire, do you have to, you want to share something? I do, especially because I, I will be leaving in, uh, in about eight minutes. I'm, I'm trying to make it last as long as I can. Um, but I wanted to offer something to Marcella and everybody here because um, I guess it was like a year or so ago, I realized we have the word empath and empathic, but we don't have an equivalent word for the ability to feel earth. And so I created one and I'm, a, I'm submitting it to dictionaries and, um, and I put it in a file which I'd like to send. Either you can give me co-hosting permission and I can just put it in the chat, Yuri, or I'll have to email it to you and you could, you could forward it to people. But I'd like to just read it to you. Ah, you did that. Let's see if that makes it work. Perfect. Um, but just just because when we can language something, it, it gives it a certain kind of authority that our felt experience is not validated enough yet in our society. So I'd love to just read to you. And I got some feedback from different people like Rick Tarnas. Uh, I can't remember if I asked Fridjof Capra what he thought, but Polly Higgins, who is uh, an environmental lawyer, so if you are ecopathic, which would be an adjective, it's the ability to understand, be aware of, be sensitive to, and vicariously or directly experience the complex aliveness of Earth's ecological processes, experiencing and subjective presence, without necessarily having the feelings, thoughts and experience fully communicated in an objectively explicit manner. So it's, there's a lot of words, but basically in its simpleness, it's, it's, saying, it's saying I don't have to be able to put into words for you how I know that the earth is alive because I'm not getting a telegram or a memo from earth saying I'm alive. It's a direct experience. And it's true and it's happening. And I think the more of us that have a language, um, and it's like, like I said, it's like being empathic, but it's ecopathic. So um, I'm going to, I'll upload it into the chat just to share. I'd actually forgotten about it, but when I was listening to you talk, Mark Seller, it suddenly popped up into my mind and I, it, it was like, oh God, I never finished that project. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your work. It's, it's the most important work. Helping us as a, as a species to recognize our belongingness. I'm an artist and I, and so this is my subject and I approach it from that perspective and, and from the perspective of consciousness, because that's, that's what I teach and study. Um, so it just fills my heart when I meet people who care enough to devote their lives and their passion and their attention to bringing this to the front of our minds, to helping us validate the experiences we have every day that we don't necessarily name as valid, genuine experiences because they're outside of our normal way of speaking about things and our normal way of, of validating things. So it's just a scale of importance, you know, bringing it up in the scale of importance and relevance. I mean, we're not human without planet. <laughs> you know, we're just not. We don't exist without planet. So thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. We will, we will spread your word. I like it a lot. We really need, it's very important to have new words, like, like Maslow needs to create a peak experience and immediately gave ah okay so i'm not crazy what i'm feeling is recognized others feel it also and ecopathia it's uh, really what we want to awake it, it, it might in in the conversation with john we were talking about the the, the, the how do we how do we treat the risk of psychopath uh, controlling the earth 
which is uh, what's happening. So maybe we need the echo path to <laughs> maybe well, that's the way. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, the, the document has, because that, that issue exists, the document has ecopath and then it has a sociopath <laughs> contrasting, saying someone who cannot feel earth energies. And there are lots of shorter definitions like some, the act of feeling earth's energies, the act of empathizing with earth's subjective experience, you know, as, a, as experienced by outside forces. So there's, there's lots of different definitions because you get that in dictionaries you know, so that you can pick one that works for you. Um, Yuri, just so you know, I'm still not able to share a file into the chat. So if you want to just give me your email, maybe. Maybe I don't have this enabled in, in my Zoom. So uh, please share it to me and, and we, and I'll try to, if that's okay with everyone, I can share this file with everyone. Uh, or I can put it on the Imagine Action website when we, when there will be the recording and I'll put this uh, as a file so people can access it when they see the, the video. Um, yes, I still just need an email for you, Uri. Ah, so okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so I thought you have it. Okay. I'll just... Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I'll... everyone, to, to get um, logistical. <laughs> Sorry, Yuri, if you can repeat later, what is the form that we're going to get? I'm, I'm very touched by what Claire and Marcel are bringing because I work with this all the time and I have tears in my eyes because I could never made myself um, heard <laughs> directly and I don't need to but I I really honor I don't want to miss to have this document so if you can explain it again <laughs> how we're going to get this information thank you so uh, much so, so if everybody is okay with it I can send it to everyone the, this file after our talk everyone that registered if it's okay with Claire and I also put it on the imagine action in conversation page near the, the, the recording of the call so whoever sees that can open it as a file but if you by any chance did not get it, just contact me. And when you registered on the Zoom, you would have my email as well. So Okay. So so but you know you can you can find me on Facebook. There's nobody with my name uh, <laughs> in the world. <laughs> so if by any chance you didn't get it or you're not finding it, please contact me and um, and we did create a, a sutra circle, conversation circle following the um, conversation with John and we we didn't plan I didn't plan to open one for this but if you want I can co open a conversation circle so people can share more knowledge and things as they're coming out um, from this and um, yeah thank you Claire for uh, generosity and, and the, the inspiration and I, I know you have to go uh, anything uh, yeah you, you want to say something? It's, it's sent. I'm very happy to be able to contribute. It, it just thrills me that we take care of Earth. And, and I'll watch the rest of the recording. Uh, of, I'm going to teach now, but I'll watch the rest of the recording uh, of our gathering here. And I, I so wish I could stay for the whole of it. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel this, this thing about we, we, we basically want to be helpful for one another and for the earth. This, um, yeah. Yeah, it, it just it moves me that that we have been taught otherwise and we're teaching otherwise in subtle and not subtle ways and as um, uh, and i feel uh, i feel there is a lot of violence in it in that we are teaching and 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 portraying ideas in which we are actually interest driven when it's not true, we're not interest driven at all. We're we actually the the the, gen, the the tendency, the natural tendency, and you can see the young children obviously, uh, is to 
to be helpful. And actually, we feel very bad when we are not, when we are not, when we don't perceive that we can be helpful or not be seen for our gift. That's 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 actually what makes us. And um, I, I, there was something else I wanted to ask you to raise, but I, I first see that there is gifts and maybe someone wants to add to this conversation or bring to that. And I, I did want to bring your, your pyramid that was super inspiring for me, the double, double Maslow pyramid. Um, um, but first, maybe if someone wants to bring in more um, contribution at this stage and then um, I bring that to, the, to this. Naomi? Yeah. So, Naomi, yeah? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, now I feel nervous. I don't know why. But um, while Claire was uh, sharing uh, this word with us and when Marcella was talking, um, some like a big question for me came up and I was actually discussing this before with my partner. Um, is it, I, I'm just curious to like anyone's uh, thoughts on this. Um, is it possible you think that there are people who are not ecopathic because I'm very um, prone to think that we are all capable of feeling that, uh, but we just, I don't know, people produce walls and coping mechanisms and all these things uh, because of nurture, because of trauma, because of, well, anything. Um, yeah, I was discussing this with my partner who's very, yeah, calm and very grounded. Um, and in a way, I feel like he's very purely connected to earth in that way, but he's not like um, busy with that in a spiritual way. And so I sometimes question his, not question his groundness, but like, um, how, yeah, how can you, how can you be grounded without experiencing this eco, um, pathic, pathic? Yeah. yeah, all these questions, I don't know, like, is it possible to, that there are people who do not have this potential? I, I cannot imagine that, yeah. I use a, I use a metaphor that can maybe give an answer or, or a key at least. The seed, the sprout, the plant, the flower and the fruits. The seed, he said walls. The seed it's on a hard shell and it thinks that things will stay as they have been until this moment. The seed only knows the seed reality, the seed status. But then it arrived a moment, not for all the seeds, but it arrived a moment where the right conditions are there, humidity, warmth, soil, and the seeds get over <laughs> all uh, overwhelmed and revolutionary and start to discover that there's something more. So there, is, there are people that are, and in once uh, who is in the sprout state is exploring so say wow there is a lot to explore uh, roots going down uh, leaves going up and it's the exploring uh, moment of the life then someone understand okay who am i and it's the plant okay it's clear so i i, I work to strengthen my identity then you bring the plant to the, to flourish it's the the maslow pyramid the what uri showed before you know the maslow pyramid that says that once that you um, fulfill the basic needs then you arrive to self-realization and that's the flower the flower is when the ego go leaves his best but the path didn't finish because the flower then goes beyond the top of the pyramid 
and became a fruit. A fruit that for others to be eaten and to start again the cycle. So with this map, uh, because when, when, when we train ecotuners in the International Ecosystem Society, we, we created the word ecotuner, eco-facilitator, nature facilitator, because only psychologists can define themselves eco-psychologists. But if there is a tracking guide that uh, is trained in eco-psychology, he is an eco-tuner. So uh, eco-tuner have to understand which is their public. Because I can't uh, do the same kind of work. I can't say the same things if I'm in a public of seeds, of sprouts, of plants, of flowers, of fruits. And what I like of this map is it's not uh, like giving notes. You are insufficient, sufficient, more or less, good, great. No, because each one of these reality has his beauty, has his moment. Uh, a child in, uh, in the first grade, it's no, no, no better, no worse than uh, someone in the university. Each one will have his moment, his time. So maybe for someone is the time to stay still as a seed until the things will, will be ready. And obviously, as a cotuner, I will have to work in a completely different way with a seed and with a plant. So I, I have to honor also the, the place where each one um, is in this moment of his life. That's anyway a good place. I don't know if it can be helpful. And, mm -hmm. and another things that might be helpful uh, because you say your partner is very grounded. I like very much Thomas Berry. Thomas Berry is the ecologist and theologist. He say we don't need transcendence going oh, toward the spirituality. We, get, we need incendence. So bringing the values of spirituality in, in the daily life on the, or in the material world. So many times, grounded people, although we profess atheist or not interested in anything spiritual, from this point of view, it's much more spiritual that someone says, oh, I'm part of this sect. I talk with God every <laughs> Monday morning or things like this. Mm. So um, it's interesting, these new words like incendence that help us to, to see things in different ways. The earth needs people that act. And not all the people that act has a conventional spiritual view. Mm -hmm. But from, from um, Thomas Berry and from eco-psychology point of view also, who act is already spiritual. I and mean, spirituality has to get concrete with action. No matter which action, each one will find the one that's good for him and for his um, environment. But acting. So being grounded is very important. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Nomi. And I, I, I want to do something because we're nearing our end. And um, I, so first of all, I wanted to, to so that this, this, this thing, I, I can also share that. And it's something really inspired me about um, this idea that uh, after self actualization there is a whole other realm and i really feel that i feel that in my own process and i feel that many people maybe in this call are already in that process in which is really about how do i bring a vision of love and action and uh, into the world and i also want to take in this invitation from naomi and marcella about thinking how can we so when we made this conversation it was about how can we apply the lessons of echo psychology and and I feel maybe we can do a breakout room session and try to answer this collectively uh, and see also asking ourselves and maybe have two or three people in a room uh, for about 10 minutes and sharing just um, what we're taking away from this conversation and trying to translate it to and the question is, how can we all apply the lessons of eco-psychology in our lives 
and when working with communities and organizations to bring about a new story for human beings and nature. So, um, and you can see, you know, if, if working with communities and organizations is not relevant for you, just do it with the, our lives. So how can we take the lessons of Ike of psychology? And um, if, so is, is that, does that sound something we wanna try to, to be in 10 minutes and then we share here what came out from that. So try to, uh, you'll be with one or two more people and just try to, to, to take the time in such a way that everybody gets to share. So about two, three minutes each. So, um, and um, I'm going to set the timer on 10 minutes, 11 minutes, so it's 10 and then there will be a reminder of uh, one minute before we go. So, um, so you would be with one or, or one group of three and other groups of two, I see. Okay. Um, so three to five minutes each, what we're taking away and you can refer to the chat uh, and the question. Okay, opening the rooms. Hello. I, are you here, Shanti? Oh. Uri. Yeah. Puoi mettere Naomi nella stanza numero 4 con Andrea e Kate? Perché io devo fare una telefonata e lei non ha potuto avere i suoi compagni. Ah, ok. E, e, e quindi do, cosa devo fare? Uh, you put Naomi in room number 4, where I was before, with Andrea and Kate. Ok, I'll move her now. Ok. Thank you. It's <laughs> okay, you need to click again on the breakout rooms and I might send Shanti also. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, she wasn't there, so I I don't okay. know. I, so did now did you tr try to go to breakout? Do you see that? Um I don't see anything. Okay. Or we can share here. <laughs> we can use it oh. as a breakout room. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, it is recorded then, right? But ah, oh, that's okay. I can I can stop recording. How how we can learn from ecopsychology in uh, uh, in our everyday work, uh, and uh, Sato shared that she is already part of a community, living in a, in a in a community, and um, and uh, CB as well shared her. Uh, what what she what she's doing in, in mainly in England uh, and uh, UK and uh, that's that's it and we I think we we enjoyed also talking about uh, um, activities that could be done for for children adolescents uh, I mean all the parts on uh, on education that could be informed by eco psychology. Yeah, thank you, Angelo. And I see CB also shared education, rites of passage for schools, art of mentoring, eight shields. Yeah. Bill Plotkin. Um, yes. yes. Thank you. Someone else from, from this group or another group wants to share shortly uh, just what came up in your conversations and sharing. Uh, I, 
Go ahead. I was in I was I was in a group with um, Andrea and Shanti, but Shanti didn't talk at all. Um, so um, I hope they're okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it turned out that Andrea and, and myself are both working with grief, that she is uh, working out, and I hope I'm not jumping, Andrea, if it's not so, but um, an online grief way of being um, to, connected with eco-psychology. And um, so it turned out that we're both working with grief, and I'm working with Extinction Rebellion with grief tenders and also white racism. and so we really had that i think there was a we both felt struck by um the very obvious seed plant flower fruit uh and how that was helpful to andrea if you don't mind me saying andrea about really understanding that people are at different stages and so we speak to them it's it's easier for both if we meet them where 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 they're at and where we're at rather than this that everyone should know this now and get on with it. So that felt like a, a relief for Andrea to remember that. And for me, it really struck, it really strikes my grief around, uh, I mentioned um, white racism and um, intentionally racist men in Britain at the moment who are out on the streets and remembering that they were beautiful little boys who got damaged by society and that we are nature and so really grieving that that damage that's being done to us. Thank you, Kate. Yes, Anne? I got really excited by something that came up in our little group, um, if you don't mind me mentioning with Louise and Rowena. Um, Louise talked about being, I think of like a breastfeeding counsellor or working with mums on breastfeeding. And I just had this this thought of like that um, being a what's the word um, like a parallel to relationship between the earth and humans, the mother and 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 the baby the baby suckling, and it's a two way relationship of about it, the, the mother will provide, but only as much or as in response to the baby suckling. Um, and I just thought this, I'm going to think about this a lot more. I just was really interested. In, and now Louise has just posted something. Louise, would you like to say that? I thought that was amazing too. Okay. I, I was just, I'm just interested in how relationship goes both ways. But uh, uh, something that just I love about uh, breastfeeding is when part of what happens is has the baby suckles, a vacuum's created. And so bacteria in the baby's sweat, uh, in spit goes back into the mother's breast and as soon as that happens the mother's body starts translating that bacteria into ad antibodies that then get delivered to the baby in the next feed and so it's this completely relationship where where the mother and baby are for informing each other all the time but yeah that's what i was going to say so I've just bowled away by that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, the mother also came in our main room breakout. Uh, I don't know if you know me, if you want to share, or I just it was very moving and sharing about the wisdom that's coming from, from Nomi's and the connection that we have and we feel. And what makes you think about when you are sharing Louise as well as you know this whole situation of the mother earth and, and us as her children and our relationship to her to with her she it whatever um, and how can we communicate better so and maintain that relationship and yeah I I feel to bring it maybe to Marcella for a closing uh, as we have some few minutes and uh, just again expressing the gratitude for your time and wisdom today and all of us, all of you that were being part uh, and I'll share my email also, yes. I'll 
I'll share the email for everyone. So if you have like a difficulty about getting the, 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 the material, and then if you want to share something more with the group, uh, I can I can share that. Okay, I'm having some issue and I'm trying to write and then it comes out only in Hebrew. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> like only over, okay, I copied it for somewhere else. So if uh, that's my email and if you want to share also in this group and keep in contact, just write privately over in the group chat. And uh, yeah, bringing it back to Marcella. Uh, there's something. Yeah, just to, oops, they went by themselves. <laughs> I just want to thank you very much for Uri for organizing all the people for coming, and um, I will close with a, with a sentence of Sarah Cohn, one a, a psychologist. That she say, "The Earth speaks among the most sensible among us, through the most sensible among us." So thank you for being um, portavoce. Come si dice portavoce? Um, messengers or yeah, messengers. Messengers. Oh, persons. Earth because the, the 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 we are part of the planet. The planet needs all of us. Needs that each one of us awaken, and that each one of us can become an awakener of others. So no matter in which field, working with mothers and babies, working with building, working in education in medical in psychology in whatever when when you feel this sensibility that we are the earth you can find your own way to to translate it in something that can be useful also to other as that can allow you to go after the point of the pyramid and feel that you are part of this living earth so i leave you with this wish with this uh, um, thought and big hug. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and have a nice, yes, a big hug and <laughs> you, everyone. You can... summer or winter if you are north or south. <laughs> you can unmute yourself you and say goodbye also and just in... Bye. Thank you, Marcella. Lovely to meet you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you, Uri. Thank you, Nomi.